Welcome to the Quebec and New England Railroad Southern Division, HO Layout Video number 84. This video series follows the efforts of the QNNE Mechanical Department in converting a fully assembled and painted Intermountain GP10 into QNNE GP10 number 70. Part 5, Applying Decals. This is the really exciting part. The decals used by the Quebec and New England were custom made for me by Highball Graphics out of uh, New Hampshire back in March 2012. And at the time I paid $146 for four sheets. The four sheets were eight and a half by 11, they're rather large. Um, and when you consider that I was able to do 40 locomotives, uh, half a dozen cabooses, so you know around 50 pieces of equipment for a, a less than $150, it worked out to you know, about $3 per unit. So relatively cheap when you amortize this amount over all the units I've done, and I still have leftovers, in fact. Uh, so the, the logo was designed uh, by me using um, Corel Draw, And so I developed the four sheets as artwork that was sent directly to Highball Graphics uh, to produce the, uh, the decals. The first sheet of decals was mostly these large logos, which were used on the hood units like the GP38s, uh, Dash 8, Dash 40Bs. Uh, I also had uh, at the top of the sheet all the road numbers. I didn't want to have to um, cut up individual numbers, so I didn't go the normal route of having 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But I, I, since I knew the road numbers in my fleet, I just had the actual road numbers produced here. So you'll see 74, 75, 76, 77. So the whole fleet was here. I just had to cut out the numbers, place them on the cab, and, and that's all there was to it. I also have a section here and smaller print. This is the, uh, the uh, uh, road numbers uh, um, and reporting marks for the cabooses. So I have here QE 999, 998, 997, etc. There's enough here for about 10 cabooses. I've done six so far. I could probably do a few more. Uh, there's also another row here of lettering. This, this is just a, a string of Fs. F's denoting front. So at the front of, of uh, every locomotive, there's an F just before the, the start of the stripe on the sill. Uh, the next sheet in the package was a set of smaller logos. These logos would go on smaller locomotives like the Switchers, the GP9s. And there's also a section here with the really small logos. Um, these go on the nose of the hood units. There's quite a few here. I originally intended on having it front and back, but I decided in the end just to have them on the nose. So I've got lots of leftover small logos. And then you can see this sheet also has um, some striping. I decided to go with, with custom sizing my striping as well because it was much more cost effective. I chose three thirty seconds of an inch and there was, I think, two sheets of striping uh, because there's a lot of striping used in the Q&E um, paint schemes. There are stripes on the sill, uh, as well as uh, between the red and black. So here's an example of one of those sheets of stripes. You can see you can cram an awful lot of stripes in here. Um, with two sheets, I had more than enough to do uh, my whole fleet and then some. So these are the leftovers from everything that's been done to date. I also have some other leftovers. A couple of sheets here that look like they've never actually been used and the reason for this is that this first set that I got from Highball Graphics they weren't quite in alignment. There's a bit of um, uh, white shining through. To get this bright yellow uh, you need to have uh, several layers uh, of, of paint and you need to make sure the different the, the two layers are in alignment before you run the second run and so they're slightly out of phase and if you look at it with a, a magnifying glass even with the naked eye, when you look at it, there's a bit of a, um, a fuzziness about it. So uh, I didn't think it would be appropriate to use those. And I gave uh, the folks at Highball Graphics a call. They said, no problem. We'll send you out a fresh set. We'll make sure that they're sharp and in focus. One of the things I added to this sheet um, after the fact was uh, number boards. Uh, just like with the uh, road numbers on the cab, I didn't want to be cutting individual numbers to try and you know place them on on the the uh, number boards they're much smaller numbers to begin with and i wanted to make sure that they would uh, have a black background and 
allow light to come through what the number was. So these here are actually done in layers as well, but it's a layer of white with a layer of black on top of it with a cutout where the number is. So uh, indeed, when you put these on, on an illuminated number board, um, they work really well in having the light shine through where the number is. And there's also a series of very, very, very small um, numbers that are the number boards for the switchers. They're tiny, tiny, tiny numbers. Uh, these um, were a godsend, really, because I didn't want to have to try and cut out these tiny, tiny numbers uh, to place on, on the number boards for the switches. So that worked out really well. I was happy with that. So I have these, these extra sheets. I really can't use them, but um, um, you never know. Good to have an extra. In terms of leftovers, after 40-odd uh, locomotives and half a dozen cabooses. This is what I have left over. A few bits and pieces, odds and ends, uh, and enough, of course, to, to do the last locomotive, our, our GP10, and we're going to get to that next. Right, we're going to start with the nose. And we have a piece of striping here. It should be just enough, to, long enough to uh, wrap all the way around. Should be good enough. So we'll drop it in the water and watch it curl. Give it a few seconds. All right, we can see, whoop, it's coming right off. Look at that. Usually takes a little longer than that. There we go. We're just going to slide it along. No, oh, we're going to slide it underneath because there's a little handrail there. tricky. See there's this one grab iron here. I didn't want the decal to go over it so I'm going to pull it underneath like that and then let that drape around. So now it's just a lot of fidgeting to get it to line up with the point where the black meets the red. And we're fortunate that when we pulled off the masking tape, we got a fairly straight line. So we just have to follow that line. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to apply our micro set to help it. Um, make good contact with the paint below. And we'll still have time to get it to uh, sit into its final resting place. No problem with the edges that hang out because we'll be able to slice those off with a sharp blade later. And once we're happy with it, we'll just set it aside dry. And then when it's dry, we'll apply our microsol to let it snuggled in over any minor imperfections there may be in the surface. And we'll be good to go. That looks about right. There. the process with the edge of the cab, both sides. I've measured it around, it's about that long. We need to cut, 
cut it to fit. So we will do that. Hopefully it's getting dull. Turn around. There we go. Pop it in the water. Right now I'm just using leftover strips um, rather than cutting a fresh strip from the decal sheet. I've got lots of leftover pieces that are shorter in length and they work out just fine for little pieces like around the cab. I'll have to cut a fresh one uh, for the hood, obviously. All right, let's see how this goes. That last one took a lot less time than I thought it would. It's been a while since I've done decaling. Sometimes, depending on the manufacturer, the decals, they'll hang on for a while. Sometimes they'll come right off after only a few seconds in the water. This is where it helps um, when you're cutting the decals from the sheet, cut as close as possible to the actual um, stripe because you're going to have um, a little bit of a clear edge hanging over. And if you're putting it like I am on the edge, oh dear, that broke. Well, that may still be salvageable. We'll hold it here for now. When you're on the edge of um, a plastic, then the clear edge is going to have to fold over the edge over the edge of the of the model so you don't want that to be too long we'll take this little piece that cut too long anyway up with that. There we go. Just need to straighten it. There we go. So no harm done. Sometimes decals break. It's one of the risks. But when you're just talking about striping, it's not really a big deal. So there we are. Again, no need to fuss too much because we still have to apply our micro set. And it'll start swimming around anyway. You can see how the micro set gets sucked right under the decal. And that's what you want it to do. You want it to make sure it gets underneath there and push out any air bubbles and any water that's in there. So you have a good contact with the surface of the paint before you come back, come back with the uh, with the microsol to snuggle it down for its final finish. Sometimes if you put too much of the liquid on it, it swims around quite a bit. So sometimes you need to um, blot out the excess with either a Q-tip or, or a small piece of tissue. Or even your finger will suck it up. By, by drawing away the, the liquid, it snuggles right down. I think that's actually pretty good. I'll run the back side of the blade along it. Let's see what it does. Yeah, that looks to be straight. Nothing overhanging. All right, I'll let that, that one dry out, and we'll do the same thing on this side. All right, for our hood striping, <clears throat> we have to uh, cut some fresh stripes. So you want to come as close as possible to the yellow without actually gouging the yellow. And slice that off. Make sure you're using a, a metal ruler and a sharp blade.
try and do the same thing on the other side. Get that stripe right off. Try this again with a fresh blade. Oh, much better. You can feel it when it cuts through. You can tell. Yeah, there you go. There we are. Always use a fresh blade. Here. See if we can focus on this. There, and you can see we've got the striping and almost nothing on either side of it. Okay, since we have the handbrake lever here, which we know is going to give us a bit of trouble getting the um, decal over, we're going to cut this stripe since it's much too long anyway. We're not going to try and wrap it around the entire hood. We're going to just do a piece from the edge of the handbrake to the end of the hood. And we'll do a separate piece for the rear, back here, and a separate long piece for the other side here. So, cut this to measure, it should be fine. Yeah, so that'll be good. Into the water it goes, and it curls up. I don't think you're interested in watching me fiddle with this, so we'll get back to you when the balance of the striping is done. We have striping to put along the sill as well, body frame. I've got my small F already placed, and I'm just matching up the striping so that the same on both sides. I've already cut one to the correct length, and I'm going to mark this one so that they're both the same size. There we are. Now, the thing to note is that as these things snuggle down, It'll show the dimple marks where the holes are. I noticed just now that I had actually missed one of the holes, so I had to uh, take my little drill bit and measure out what I think is the right spacing for the stanchions and drill the hole um, so that uh, it looks clean when I put the striping on. So we'll get striping on both sides. I haven't, de I haven't decided whether I'm going to put any striping on the front. I haven't done any other locomotives something I'm toying around with the idea of maybe having a stripe there and there. Might do that. Another thing to, to note is that as these stripes snuggle down after application of the micro saw, you have to do, uh, well certainly not, not for the areas that are, um, that are smooth, like, like the nose and the cab, but on the hood where you've got all the um, details like the doors, and especially here uh, where there's louvers, you have to do uh, two or three passes of, of the microsol to, to really get the uh, decal to snuggle down. And then eventually, um, as it really softens up, using the back side of the blade, uh, run very lightly, almost just by gravity, allow the, the blade to run through each of the blades of the, of the louvers 
so that it snuggles down um, and, and as well everywhere there's a, a door mark just lightly let the blade run down so it really snuggles down into all those cracks and crevices so we'll do that after the second or third pass of the dial saw but for now we'll get back to this and here we go I've cut a very small piece of stripe in here to see if we can go over the handbrake in a meaningful way. I'm going to have to wipe this down with the microset while I'm doing it. There's a sill stripe, doesn't look too bad. If it looks curved, it's because the plastic's warped, and once the body's put back together, it'll straighten out. One more to do, then we're done with the striping. All right, while our striping is in various states of uh, snuggling up and drying out, we've cut out our two logos. We're gonna use the medium size logo like we do for our other GP9s and switchers. And we've got our road numbers, number 70 cutout for the cab. So we're going to go ahead and apply those. Now the question is whether it's going to end up landing on these louvers. I think it will a little bit. On the regular GP9s, there were different louvers. And I shifted the uh, logo around as much as possible to stay off the louvers. I could do the same thing here. There we go. Here. So we'll keep it. We'll have the cue centered on that set of doors, or at least touching the edges of the doors there. And this D in England ends just before that line in the door. It stays off, stays off the uh, the louvers. I could lower it a bit. The uh, I believe the GP nines, the uh, the Quebec and New England wording was much closer to the striping, but I kind of like this. It's uh, more spread out. So just so we keep it off too many edges or breaks in the door. Let's do that. That looks good. Every time I touch it, it moves, of course. It's also, I don't know if you can tell, it's also just above the hinges in this door, so that's not a bad thing. Um, you want the decals to be over as few bumps uh, and hinges as possible because it's harder for them to snuggle down over it. So this actually works out quite well. There we are. Just let that dry out a bit. You can see we've uh, pretty much finished uh, most of our decal work um, for the hood, uh, frame, cab, and nose. Um, as I expected, it took about four or five passes with the decal setting solution to get the uh, decal to settle down over the um, door hinges and the door clasps. I also made sure to, to run that run the blade, the dull side of the blade, through all of the 
cracks between the doors and run more setting solution on it. So all those um, openings that the decal has snuggled into it, there's no bubbles anywhere. Also made sure wherever we passed over the louvers that um, the striping snuggled down to each of the louver blades. So overall, uh, I'm quite happy with, with the way that turned out. I did have one small mishap as the uh, decal was, was setting. Uh, the small B in Quebec uh, for some reason just disintegrated. Uh, I very quickly cut that away while it was on um, the hood and created a, a replacement B from another um, logo. So you can catch mistakes um, on the fly if you're careful and quick about it. The only other thing to do now um, is to add a small logo on the back side of the hood. Uh, on my other GP9s, I had it on the front and back. Um, not something we can do with, with this one, of course, because we've got a headlight casing. So it might look a little bit odd, but since these locomotives do run um, long and forward, we'll have the, the logo on, on the rear end. Another thing that I, that I made sure to do um, on the frame is to um, find the holes where the um, where the stanchions are located or connected to the frame for the handrails and poke those through with with a drill bit so I don't have to go fishing for them later and I also applied more a decal setting solution to that so that it snuggled into the holes with that done the last thing that I need to do is to uh, apply oops <laughs> apply the uh, number boards as I mentioned before I've got um, custom made number boards for every uh, locomotive in my fleet so there's no cutting of individual numbers I just have to cut out the entire number board and apply those directly to um, the individual number boards that uh, that I had removed during the disassembly process and they may not fit uh, exactly uh, because when I made the uh, number boards I based it on the um, the Atlas Atlas uh, number boards so if there are any cracks I'll just come along with a sharpie and and touch those up well it turns out that uh, using a sharpie wasn't such a good idea after all I uh, ended up using a very fine tip brush with uh, a dab of engine black to uh, coat the edges of the uh, number boards with black so that no light pokes through uh, around the decal. Well, now that we've completed the decal work, uh, we'll come along with uh, our testers dull coat with a couple of coats to uh, effectively seal the decals and remove any shine from from the decals. So you see it's done a fair, fairly good job of doing that. What I also did uh, is reinstall the uh, the number boards. Um, it's one little part of the, the intermountain design that I'm not terribly happy with. Because they're separate parts, um, they, they don't sit in um, tightly uh, against the opening. I had to actually remount uh, the opening a little bit so they'd sit better uh, up against the uh, the plastic. They still look like they're um, a little thicker than prototype. Not the end of the world, but um, not something that uh, I find as good as, as other models that have uh, lit number boards. In any case, it's uh, good to go. The one last thing we're going to have to do is remove the uh, little bits of masking tape on the headlights um, front and rear. Uh, and then start reinstalling the little details. So we've got headlights to reinstall, marker lights, and of course the uh, the windshield wipers. And then uh, with the final reassembly, a little bit of touch-up paint on the hoses to get the silver back in. And the only thing we'll have left after that is the handrails. And I haven't heard back yet from Intermountain on that, so we'll have to see uh, what we'll do about that. Anyway, that's it for this uh, part of the series, and we'll see you next time. Coming up in part six, putting it all together again.